some difference in co-function identities. The goal is to verify trig identities ultimately, but we're going to do other things along the way. So the sum identities are what we're talking about here. We've got three of them that you need to memorize. The sine of alpha plus beta is the first one. And then we're going to go to cosine alpha plus beta and the tangent of alpha plus beta. So do you have to memorize these? Absolutely. They're the ones that come up all the time in pre-calculus and calculus. Sure. So we know that the sine of alpha plus beta is not equal to the sine of alpha plus the sine of beta, right? Yeah. We showed that with that one particular instance where, where <laughs> alpha was x and beta uh, was, was 2. Um, but what it turns out to equal, I'll just give it to you. Uh, it turns out to be the sine alpha cosine beta plus, this is the way I like to write it, sine beta cosine alpha. So I'm switching, it's like I'm switching the angles around. Your book writes it alpha. cosine alpha. Your, your book keeps alpha beta, I keep sine cosine the order sine cosine. So your book writes this second term as cosine alpha times sine beta, but that is multiplication, so it's okay to switch it around. So I like it this way because it goes sine, cosine, sine, cosine, and I just remember to switch the angles around. That's how I remember it. And then uh, the cosine of alpha plus beta, that one goes cosine, cosine, sine, sine, with actually a minus in between. So it goes cosine, alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So when it's a plus, cosine alpha plus beta, the other side, it's actually a minus. And then the tangent alpha plus beta, here's how it starts. The tangent of alpha plus beta starts out as tangent alpha plus tangent beta. It looks like the freshman's dream, right? Doesn't that look like distribution? But then the dream, Ten more steps. but the dream turns into a nightmare. Yeah, so it, it's actually that that whole thing divided by one minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So yeah, the the freshman's dream is over on this one too. So none of them look like what you'd like them to look like. There's difference identities as well. But it's not really three more separate ones to remember. If you remember these three, you can come up with the difference identities. So if it's sine of alpha minus beta, then that's just going to change the plus right here to a minus. And that's actually easy to prove using the idea of even and odd functions. So if it's cosine alpha minus beta, it's cosine alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And then if it's tangent alpha minus beta, that's called, so that's called a difference identity. Then on top, the plus changes to a minus. On the bottom, the minus changes to a plus. So if you remember the first three sum identities, you can remember the next three difference identities. So I said it's easy to show that that's true at least. Why would that be easy to show? What, what's, let's take the first one. Let's take the sign of alpha minus beta couldn't you rewrite that as the sine of alpha plus a negative beta? Isn't subtracting beta the same thing as adding the opposite of beta? And then couldn't you use the original sum formula all in blue? So if you did that, check out what you'd get. So if you use the formula, well, in, in, on the right side, it's all in black. If you use the original formula, then it becomes, okay, sine of alpha on the right side. Cosine of beta, but now beta is negative. So cosine negative beta, use parentheses. And then, okay, we're using the, the original guy in black. So plus sine of beta, but beta is negative now. So negative beta. Cosine alpha, which is still just alpha. Okay, so what is, for that first term, on the right side, what is the cosine of negative beta the same as? Cosine is an even function, remember that? So the sine of alpha, just copying that down, cosine negative beta is cosine of beta, but then what's the sine of negative beta? <coughs> the sine of negative beta is the opposite of the sine of beta because sine is an odd function, remember that? 
the, the negative, you can pull it out of an odd function. So it becomes plus a negative or just minus sine beta cosine alpha. So you can, you can go from the sum identity for sine to the difference identity by making that, that substitution and, and show that that's true, if for some reason you forgot it. Similarly, you could do that for cosine alpha minus beta and tangent alpha minus beta. So here's an exercise. Um, let's find the exact value of the sine of 330 degrees plus 45. So what is this really? It's the sine of what? So it's really the sine of three, we'll just add them together. What's 330 plus 45? 375, which is, if you subtract 360 from the 375, it's the sine of, it's the same as the sine of 15. Uh, don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying 375 equals 15 degrees, right? I'm not saying 375 equals 15 degrees. I'm saying the sine of 375 is equal to the sine of 15 degrees because the period of the sine is 360 degrees, right? Okay, so we're really finding the sine of 15 degrees, which 15 degrees is not a special angle, is it? But if you split it up as the sum of two special angles and use the sum identity, you can get an exact value if for whatever reason you want it, you can get it in this case. So how do we get it? Well, write it down, your, your idea, Michael, write it down every time you use it until you have it memorized. So, this is a good idea to do in the homework. Write down sine of alpha plus beta. So the way I like to memorize it is that's the one that goes sine, cosine, sine, cosine, and then that's kind of the template I create. And then uh, just sine, co sin, cos, sin, cos, and then uh, I fill in. I fill it in appropriately. So it's the sine of alpha, cosine, beta. Okay, if it's a plus for the, s for the uh, sum identity for sine, if it's a plus, alpha plus beta, it's a plus on the right side as well, remember. And then it goes sine, the second term, sine of, you switch the angle, sine beta, cosine <coughs> alpha, if you write it in the order that I wrote it. Does that make sense? Okay, so what's acting like alpha here? Yeah, we could call <laughs> alpha 330 and beta, 45, right? So let's fill it in then. The sine of 330 plus 45. Fill in the right-hand side of the sum identity. What do you end up with? Sine of? That's alpha 330. Cosine of? 45. 45. That's beta. Plus sine of? 45. 45. Cosine 330, the angles switch around. So everybody see why I'm doing what I'm doing? Filling in the right side of the sum identity, essentially. Now, oh, this now looks like a familiar problem. You had a test problem that might have looked something like this, right? So uh, what you need to do is just find each one, the sine of 330, what is that equal to, and replace that with what it's equal to. So replace the factor sine of 330 with what it's equal to. What's the sine of 330 degrees? The reference angle would be 30. So that you want to start, eventually get to the point where you can do this in your head. If you're not there yet, that's fine. But think about it. Okay, 330, subtract from 360, that's the reference angle. 30 degrees. What's the sine of 30 degrees? One half, One half except you're in the fourth quadrant, so? Negative. negative. So I don't care, ab I'm, we're at the point where I don't care about sh seeing that work anymore. I just want to see the negative 1 half. Okay? Mm -hmm. Could you check that with a calculator? Yes. You bet. You bet, there's no reason why you couldn't. But if you do that every time, you're gonna be pretty slow. These are, the, and, and if you, in your next class, your, your teacher doesn't let you use calculators, you're gonna be in trouble. So be able to come up with this before checking it on the calculator. Don't use the calculator to get it. And then, yeah, you're, you're the calculator. Cosine of 45 degrees? Root two over two is a good way to write it. So there's the first product, and then sine 45. Root 2 over 2 again. Cosine 330. Ooh, is it negative in the fourth quadrant? Awesome. Students take calculus. It's positive, so it must be positive root 3 over 2. I, I kind of, I'm not consistent here. I didn't use the parentheses for multiplication. When, when, everything, when both are positive, you could use just the dot for multiplication. Everybody agree with that? Okay, uh, in that first product, multiply the negative 1 half times root 2 over 2, what do you get? If you multiply straight across, 
N yeah, negative root two over four. And then, do you, okay, the second product, multiply, do you guys remember how to multiply radicals? Multiply straight across, what's root two times root three? Six. Root six. You keep the radical and multiply the radicands, the two and the three together. And then over two times two is four. There's nothing wrong with writing it this way, but since you do have a common denominator of four, you could combine, well, okay, you, you can't really combine uh, a negative root two and a plus root six. You need the radicands to look the same to combine them, right? But you could write down the addition, negative root two plus root six. Don't try to combine those and then put one big division bar all over four to make it one fraction. Looks kind of nice and tidy that way. So there's a good way to write it. Now, what's a good way to check your answer here? Calculator. On the calculator, type in, make sure you're in degree mode, <coughs> type in sine of 15. And then make sure that, that decimal wise, that, that that number is exactly the same as negative rad two plus root six all over four. Find the exact value of the cosine of pi twelfths times the cosine of pi over four minus the sine of pi twelfths times the sine of pi over four. Now, the re one reason why you have to memorize the identities is you have to know when one is, or part of one is staring you in the face. So which identity does this kind of look like? Pi it's part of one identity anyway. What is that? Is it pi over 18? No, it's pi over 12 both times. Oh. Pi 12, pi 12. You don't, okay, fine. <laughs> Just to inform you, that was. I wrote this problem back before I had a lot of experience writing on this pad, so it may not look as good as some of my later writings. Okay, uh, so which one does this kind of look like? Oh, let's go back. You can, during the homework, before you've memorized everything, you can go back and look. Some identity is <laughs> cosine alpha plus theta. There you go. So, <coughs> every time you use it, write it down. So we have cosine alpha plus beta is equal to, okay, the template on that one goes cosine, cosine, sine, sine. And you just have to flat out somehow remember that there's a, when it's a plus between alpha and beta on the left side, it's a minus between the, the products on, on the right side. Okay, and then uh, the angles would be just in order cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. So write it down every time you use it, you'll have it memorized in no time. So which part of this identity does the stuff in blue look like? So yeah, what I want to point out then is that this right hand side kind of looks like this statement, doesn't it? What's acting like alpha? Pi over 12. Pi over 12. What's acting like beta? Pi over four. I don't know why, I just like saying, saying that better than beta. I like the way the, I, I wish I could speak with a British accent, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't you rather listen to me if I had a British accent? Yes. I, I can't do it though. I, don't I haven't really tried that hard, but I yeah. I think I would sound foolish. Next <laughs> pick one class. Pick one class. And just do your best. <laughs> <laughs> stick with the story that you're from. Yeah, yeah, just. No matter even if, even if there's a student in there that had me in another class, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the idea, guys, is we're going the other way around, aren't we? Yes. We're going from the right side of the identity to the left side. So we're going to write this entire quantity as what? The cosine of alpha plus beta, which is pi over 12 plus pi over 4. Well, no, I mean, you're going to want to add pi 12s plus pi 4s, right? So what do you need to add two fractions together? Pi 12s plus pi 4s. You need that common denominator. What would it be between 12 and 4? 12. So the first one's good to go. What do I need to multiply the second one by? Three thirds. So that becomes pi 12s plus 3 pi 12s or... 4 pi, this is scratch work here, 4 pi 12, which is really, yeah, 4 12 reduces to 1 third, so pi thirds. So in the next step, you're going to want to reduce this. You're going to want to reduce this to cosine of pi thirds 
And what's the cosine of pi thirds? It's a half. So in this one, given sine of alpha is negative 7 25ths, and alpha is that in Q4, quadrant 4. And cosine of beta is 8 17 beta is in quadrant 4. Find the sine of alpha minus beta. So this is problem is, is very much like another problem you've, kind of problem you've encountered before. It's just kind of in disguise. We don't know what alpha is. We don't know what beta is. So we can't plug in directly and find sine of alpha minus beta directly, right? But we can use, yeah, eventually we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. But first, how do I have to rewrite the sine of alpha plus beta so that I'm only using sines of alpha, <laughs> cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine, so, sine beta, that sort of thing. So the idea is to rewrite or use the difference identity. What's the difference identity for sine of alpha minus beta? Okay, so like this, and then if it's, uh, oh careful, you're thinking of cosine, right? So remember, if it's a minus, for sine, the difference identity, if it's a minus here, it's, minus minus. it's a minus here. It only changes if it's like the cosine, right? Everybody believe that? Okay, so this tells us what we need to find then. We need to find the sine of alpha. Is there any work to be done there? What's the sine of alpha? It's given to you, isn't it? Good to go. What uh, we also, so we need to find this. In, order to f in other words, in order to find sine alpha minus beta, we need to find this factor, <laughs> got it. What about this one? Got it, right? But we don't have sine of beta, do we? So how do we get it? What technique do we use from the last chapter? Well, yeah, the helper triangle, right? Let's go ahead and draw the angle alpha coordinatized. So we know it's in the fourth quadrant, right? So let's draw alpha in the fourth quadrant. Now, I don't know where it goes in the fourth quadrant. Just draw it anywhere in the fourth quadrant. Doesn't really matter. So that alpha Looks something like that. That's alpha. And then do you remember what you do to form the triangle, the helper triangle? In this case, I guess we have to raise that perpendicular, right? To form that right triangle with the x-axis. Okay, so can you label this? So I'm looking at sine alpha equals negative 7 25ths. Which side could we call Seven or negative seven, which call which sign which side could we call twenty-five? So it, it goes back to so katoa, right? The so part of so katoa. So sine of alpha is negative seven twenty-fifths, and we know from the so part of so katoa that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, right? So what side is opposite alpha? The vertical side, right? And it would have to include the negative because the, it's a negative length. We think of it as a negative length, or directionally at least, when uh, the angle is in the fourth quadrant um, for that vertical side. And then which side would we label 25? It's gotta be the hypotenuse, right? Okay. So how do we get this adjacent side then? Good old Pythagoras, right? So, okay, let me do it up here. Um, I'll call this adjacent side x. So give me the relationship. What, uh, what does Pythagoras say here? Equals so x squared plus seven squared negative, seven squared. negative seven squared equals 25 squared or x squared plus 49. What's 25 squared? 625 try. So then how do you solve that little equation? X squared plus 49 equals 625? Oh, not yet. We've got to get X squared by itself, right? So can you subtract 49 from both sides? 
So x squared would equal what if you did that? 5, 76 it must be. So then take the square root of both sides. Do you take the positive or the negative square root in this case? But you don't always take the positive, right? Yeah, x is positive in the fourth, when the angle's in the fourth quadrant. But if the angle were in the second or third quadrant, you would take the negative root, right? Don't forget that. So x is going to be positive, what, what's the square root of 576? 24. 24. So x is 24 here. So, oh, uh, so what does that actually give us? It, it's, it's not helping us with sine of beta, is it? It's actually, since we looked at alpha first, it's actually going to help us with cosine of alpha, won't it? So what's the cosine of alpha going to be? Let's write it down since we're here. Cosine of alpha, oh, that's the CAH part of SOHCAHTOA, right? So 24 25ths, there you go. Okay, so circle that, we need that. In fact, we're gonna fill that in right here, right? We can do that right now if you want. But we also need the sine of beta. And we can find it in, in exactly the same way. In fact, it, turned out, it turns out beta is in the fourth quadrant, it doesn't have to be, but beta is also in the fourth quadrant. So the picture is gonna look very similar. But let's draw a separate one. Raise that perpendicular in the same way we just did. But now what do we know? We know that cosine of beta is positive. That makes sense because we're in the fourth quadrant. Eight seventeenths, right? So which side do we label eight? Which side do we label 17? So the side that coincides with the x-axis is eight. And the 17? Hypotenuse. The hippopotamus, right? Have I shown you that cartoon? Yeah, the hippopotamus. Now, um, how do I get the side I'm going to label Y? Good old Pythagoras, right? So set it up for me. What does it look like? 8 squared plus <coughs> Y squared equals 17 squared. All right, help me out here. Take on your calculator, we're going to have to subtract out 8 squared, right? Which is 64. So subtract 64 from both sides. We get y squared, you told me, is equal to 225? And then we take the square root of both sides. Do we take the positive or negative square root? So look at the picture. Let the picture be your guide. Is y, in, in that picture, is y positive or negative? It's negative, right? It's, we're, 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 to, get, to get to this little corner point right here, that distance is y, sure, but it's a negative value in the fourth quadrant, right? I mean, that distance is, po if you think of it as a distance, it's positive is what I meant to say, but as a coordinate, it's, it's negative, right? So that means that y is going to equal negative 15, right? Okay, so then we need the sine of beta. What would the sine of beta be based on this triangle? So that's negative 15. So what would it be? Sine of beta? Negative 15, negative 15 over 17. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, so that's what I'm going to plug in right here. Negative 15 over 17. Okay, and then just to remind you, we were given sine of alpha, negative 7 25ths, and we're given cosine of beta, which is 8 17ths. Let me move these guys down a little bit. And it's a minus in between them. Okay, does everybody agree with that, what we have so far then? Then it's just a matter of, of calculating this stuff. Now, Let's not waste any more time on this problem. Let's, let's do that part on the calculator. And it's going to give you some ugly decimal. Turn it into a fraction by going to math. The first guy, if you go to the math menu right here, the first guy is fraction. Hit enter on that. Hit enter again. 304 over 425. If you do the math on that. It wouldn't be that hard to do by hand either, but it was enough that we don't need to do it. So what did I say? 304 over... 425, yeah. 
So there's an exact answer. Okay, so if I zoom out, we can have it all, we can view it all at once. Can you see that kind of, sort of? Any questions on that procedure? So once we wrote down the identity, isn't it just using that idea of the helper triangle a couple of times that you've seen in the past? Make those connections. There's not as much to remember if you do make those connections. Co-function identities. So these guys, I don't think you really have to memorize these guys. So the sine of 90 minus theta, let's use a triangle to figure out what this must be in terms of uh, one of the other uh, functions. Perhaps it's co-function. The co-function of the sine is the cosine. So I've already drawn a triangle ahead of time here. I've labeled theta, the adjacent side to theta is x, the opposite side y. The other angle in the triangle is 90 minus theta, right? Because the angles in a triangle have to add up to be 180. And r is the hypotenuse. So the sine of 90 minus theta, well, let's do it in terms of the triangle. So 90 minus theta is this angle. What's the sine in terms of r or y or x? So, so the so part of Sokotoa, uh, what's the opposite? Opposite over hypotenuse, what's the opposite to 90 minus theta? X, right? And the hypotenuse is always going to be the same, R. Oh, it's X over R. So that's the sine of 90 minus theta, right? But what is that equal to? What else is that equal to? In terms of theta and perhaps cosine. Well, what is, okay, let me put it this way. What is cosine of theta? The CAH part of Sokotoa. Adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side to theta? X. It's, oh, it's X over R. Oh, so sine of 90 minus theta is the cosine of theta. So this may actually tell us where the names of the functions come from, right? Because... If you want the sine of 90 minus theta, it's the cosine of the complement of 90 minus theta. The complement of 90 minus theta is just theta. The complement of theta is, is 90 minus theta. So you could say it more generally, generally like this. The sine of an angle is the cosine of the complement of the angle. That's why they're co-functions, or that's why they're called co-functions. So if you had to guess, what would the cosine of 90 minus theta be? So, so yeah, and that's a good guess. And you could show that using the triangle again if you want to. And what do you think the tangent of 90 minus theta is? <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. One. You're not wrong. But in terms of cotangent, how about just the cotangent of theta, right? So if, in case you guys didn't hear what he said, he said, uh, tangent of 90 minus theta is the sine of 90 minus theta over the cosine of 90 minus theta. That is true, but that's not what we were shooting for with the cofunction identities. So there's the cofunction identities. Again, if you just draw this triangle, you can figure them out, right? Rewrite in terms of sine in this example, cosine of 80 degrees. So what would the, co according to one of the cofunction identities, what would the cosine of 80 degrees be in terms of the sine function? It'd be the sine of... 90 minus 80. So it's almost easier to remember in English, in, in words, right? If you want uh, to write uh, some cosine of an angle in terms of sine, you just take the sine of the angle subtracted from 90. So sine of 90 minus 80, which is 10, right? Sine of 10. And that's it. That's all you're asked to do in this problem. So the cosine of 80 degrees is the sine of 90 minus 80, which is the sine of 10 degrees. No more work needed. Seems too easy, doesn't it? So when it says verify, it really means prove the identity, you guys. So what are the rules? Remember, proving an identity, it's a game. It's a game that you play. What's the rule? What are some of the rules, anyway? There are no rules. No, that's Fight Club. Oh, no, there's two rules about Fight Club. I'm wrong, aren't I? First rule. Yeah. So let's not talk about it. Um, <laughs> well, I haven't seen that movie in like 20 years. Uh, sine of theta plus pi over 2 equals cosine of theta. One, one rule is you start with one side, 
and you don't touch the other side, right? So which side do you want to start with? That's a, more of a guideline than a rule, but in this case it applies. So let's start with the left hand side and the other rule, and this is just my little quirk, I want you to write down the side you're starting with, even though it seems irritating and redundant. Do it so I, you're telling me which side you're starting with because when you grade these things, sometimes it's hard to actually tell. <coughs> so you'll at least get a point if you're right down the side you're starting with and you get nothing else right on a test. So sine of theta plus pi over two is a side we're starting with. What identity do we maybe want to use here? So if you, if, you, if you have scratch work, I don't want to see it within the proof of the identity. Write it off to the side, not in line with the identity. So you'll see me doing that right now. So what identity am I going to use here since I see the sine of an angle plus another angle? It would be the sine of... N yeah, that's some identity, right? So you have to recognize the form. Oh yeah, it's the form of, the, of alpha plus beta after the sine. So, oh yeah, I remember this one. We've worked with it a couple of times. Sine, cosine, sine, cosine. Fill it in for me. Alpha, beta, beta, alpha. Alpha, beta, beta, alpha. And then what goes in between? Plus sine. When it's a sine and it's a plus here, it's a plus here. So that's the identity we're going to use. What's acting like alpha? Theta. theta. What's acting like beta? Pi over, two. Pi over two. Okay. So we work one step to the right, and that one step is going to be applying the, that identity. So what do we get? Sine of theta. alpha, which is theta. Cosine of beta, which is pi, pi halves. Plus pi sine of pi over two cosine theta. Ever, is everybody with me? So this one's pretty quick. Um, we can't do much with the sine of theta because we don't know what theta is, but what's the, what's the cosine of pi over 2? Uh, no. The sine of theta times the cosine of pi over 2, cosine of 90 degrees, same thing, 0. 0. So it's the sine of theta, I want to see this, times 0, right? Now, it's, it's the sine of theta, and then on the outside of that, times zero, isn't it? So that whole thing's going to be zero, but I want to see that step. So it tells me you know that the cosine of pi over 2 is zero. And then plus, what's the sine of pi over 2? And I want to see that. I want to see you put in, so you're replacing the, the sine of pi over 2 with what it's equal to, 1, and then just copying down that cosine of theta. So 1 times cosine of theta. And then in the next step, you can just say, oh, that's the same as, uh, well, you don't have to put zero here. You can just not write it because we know that anything times zero is zero. And just say uh, cosine theta because one times cosine theta is cosine theta. So that's it. Done. <coughs> so part B, verify that the tangent of 2 theta is equal to 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. So... Uh, here's where we're going to go against that guideline. We're not going to start with the side with more stuff on it, you guys. We're going to start with the left-hand side. So I see the tangent of 2 theta on the left, so we're going to start with that tangent 2 theta. One step to the right, and then we'll, we'll uh, work downwards. So here's a trick that's going to come in handy in the homework, too. You're going to use it in, I think, question, it's either 73 or 77 in the homework. So I can split up that 2 theta and make it tangent of 2 theta equals tangent of theta plus theta. Right? Isn't that what 2 theta is equal to? Theta, 1 theta plus another theta makes 2 theta. And then, what? so why did I write it this way, you guys? Because uh, now we can use a, a sum identity on it, right? So let's remind you as, you know, off, off to the side, scratch work, what the sum identity was for the tangent. The way to remember it is it starts off on top like the freshman's dream, right? So what's the freshman's dream? It looks like distribution. Tangent alpha plus tangent beta. But then the dream turns into a nightmare. Divided by 1. It was a minus the product of the two, tangent alpha, tangent beta. So write it down every time you use it. It'll help you memorize it. 
So what's acting in tangent theta plus theta, what's acting like both alpha and beta? Theta. theta. So you don't need to include this in the identity, but just for your benefit, I'm going to think of that first, uh, the first theta is alpha, the second theta is beta. And then doing my next step downwards, I'm just going to fill in the right-hand side of this identity. Fill it in. You guys do that for me. What do you get? On top, tangent theta plus tangent theta. On the bottom, 1 minus tangent theta times tangent theta. And there's only one more step, right? So here's how you think about it. On top, you have 1 <coughs> tangent theta plus 1 tangent theta. How many tangent thetas do you have? Two. So you treat them as if they're like terms, and you get 2 tangent theta on top. Then on the bottom, you have a, a, a 1 minus tangent theta times itself. What's another way to write that? Minus tangent theta squared. Right. <coughs> so 1 minus tangent squared theta. And then isn't that what we were after? So we are done. Whoops, I was going to say equals done, but maybe we'll just put done. Okay?